with warmest, heartfelt greetings, welcome. On behalf of Serfalization Fellowship to our annual convocation held here in Los Angeles, California. We're presently speaking from the international headquarters from the chapel where our beloved guru and founder, Paramahansa Yogananda, gave classes and Kriya Yoga initiations on many different occasions. I'd like to begin this evening with a very special announcement. I hope a very joyous surprise that our revered and beloved president and spiritual head, Swami Chidananda, has very graciously agreed to officially open this year's convocation. Brother? Loving greetings and pranams to Paramahansa Yogananda's very dear and very vast spiritual family all around the world. What a joy it is to be here to officially begin this convocation by reaching out to all of you and all of us around the world joining together in great anticipation and great enthusiasm and joy for this week of spiritual renewal and spiritual inspiration and transformation. So in the name of our revered Guru Paramahansa Yogananda, welcome to all of you. Welcome. I can't see many of you, but in my heart, in my mind, reach out to the many, many thousands participating from around the world. In my mind's eye, I think of all of you all over the United States, all over India, Australia, New Zealand, Central and South America, Canada, Europe, Africa, Asia, Japan and the Philippines, the Pacific Islands, everywhere on this beautiful earth home of all of God's children of every nationality and race. Welcome to all of you. Now it's, it's a great privilege and blessing for me to officially open this convocation by invoking the divine presence of God in our gurus into this sacred space, into this wallless temple that we are creating by our united concentration, by our united devotion. So will you please join with me, close our eyes, turn the consciousness within, and feel that great omnipresent embrace of divine consciousness, of divine love from our guru and param gurus that makes this convocation very real, very personal for every one of us, no matter where we are on the face of the earth. With devotion from the heart, let us pray. Heavenly Father, Mother, friend, beloved God, Jesus Christ, Bhagavan Krishna, Mahavatar Babaji, Lahiri Mahashai, Swami Sri Yukteswar, and our Gurudev Paramahansa Yogananda Ji, saints of all religions, we bow to you all. Beloved God, beloved Gurus, bless us during this convocation that we may forge a living contact with your omnipresent spirit with the ceaseless flow 
of your divine love and wisdom and joy and inspiration. We open our hearts with gratitude, with humility, with anticipation for what we are about to receive. Beloved God, lead us from darkness to light. Lead us from ignorance to wisdom. Lead us from sorrow and uncertainty into the light of faith and eternal assurance and into your ever new joy. Om, 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 Shanti, Peace, Amen. Now our sacred space, our, our wallless temple, it reaches all around the globe has been consecrated for the coming days of convocation. And I look forward to being with you again uh, later during the week. But in the meantime, just know that I'll be meditating, I'll be praying. All of the monks and nuns will be praying that each and every one of you, day after day, as the program goes on, the whole variety of events, that day after day you go deeper and deeper into that outpouring of divine consciousness, that powerful flood of divine consciousness that's radiating out wherever there's a receptive soul participating in this convocation, radiating out from this holy ashram, from all of the ashrams where our great guru lived and meditated and communed with God, into your homes, into your hearts. It's a living flow of light, a flow of wisdom, a flow of divine love and transforming power, a spiritual transmission of divine consciousness. And all I ask for you is that you open your hearts and make yourselves receptive because I know that to the degree that you are able to feel that, you will be uplifted and changed as the days of this convocation proceed. So now I turn the program back over to our dear brother Vishwananda, who will continue on with tonight's class. And I'll just say to each of you, God bless and love each one of you. Jai Guru. Joy, joy, joy. What a wonderful way to begin this blessed event. Thank you so much, Brother Chidananda, for the love and inspiration and encouragement that you shared with us. Before we begin with our topic, I'd like to make two short announcements. One is I'd like to thank, on behalf of Serpentization Fellowship, all of us, those who had registered to attend the convocation at the Bonaventure Hotel here in Los Angeles this year for your understanding and acceptance of why we canceled the program this year. It was only after days, days of deep thought and prayer and consultation with doctors and medical experts that we made the decision to cancel this year out of concern for the welfare of all of you who had scheduled to come for your health and, and well-being. So thank you so much for that. There's no real words to express our gratitude. 
The second thing I'd like to say, speaking to a worldwide audience that is comprised of many of our longtime followers, lesson students of Self-Realization Fellowship and our guru, and many newcomers also. There may be those who, for the first time, you're having contact with Self-Realization Fellowship and with the life and work of the beloved guru. That's a bit of a challenge for a speaker to be able to speak to those who are coming for the first time who may know little or nothing about the teachings, about the Guru, and those on the other side who may have been following the teachings, practicing the teachings, developing their inner spiritual life for 40, 50, maybe 60 years, possibly even longer now. So I'd like to preface this by saying that at the heart and soul of self realization Fellowship and the teachings of Paramahansa Gananda was a great truth that he revealed to us, and that is the purpose of life is to find God. The purpose of life is to find God. So this week of classes and devotional chanting and group meditations will all be centered around that core to help all of you, whether you're a newcomer or a long-time experienced follower of these teachings, the opportunity to experience and to learn, to share, that we can help you, inspire you, assist you, and together draw closer to the fulfillment of that promise that the great Guru made on the path of self-realization. There's something quite unique about this convocation, this gathering of our Guru's worldwide family and friends. Many years ago, I was attending one of the great spiritual gatherings in India called Kumbha Mela, where for one month, one full month, millions of people gather from all over India, now from all over the world, to attend different camps, hear different speakers, share their knowledge, their wisdom. Self-Realization Fellowship's sister organization, Yogoda Satsanga Society of India, always has a camp at these melas. And one evening, I was attending one of the satsangs, the classes that they were giving. And afterwards, I was approached by a wandering sadhu, a wandering monk, a swami. And he told me, he said, I've been wandering India, searching and seeking for 30 years. And tonight, for the first time, I understand what I've been missing. I understand that it's meditation. It's seeking God within. And not only that, which I knew before, but here is a way where I can learn that meditation and where I can experience that divine one within. And that was probably not a unique experience, not just at a kum mela, but people all over the world seeking, searching, but we don't have to. This is unique. One guru, one teaching, one united family gathered together for this one week, one full week of total immersion in those teachings and in that divine love and that joy, the wisdom of that great guru that he's brought to us. I'd like to share a little information. You know, Swami Chidananda was talking about our virtual temple and how we have this opportunity on a much deeper level to unite, to share in the joy and the experience of this convocation. But to give you a little idea of what it actually means, Who's in this virtual temple? 
who is in the virtual temple? Well, as of this morning, there were over 18,000 people registered, 18,000. All 50 of the states here in the United States were represented along with Puerto Rico. 125 countries. We have participants from 125 countries. That's well over 50% of the countries in the world represented. So as we join, as we embrace all of you around the world, I'd like to share one more thing with you. So beautiful as I was going through these figures, it suddenly struck me that Parmans Higananda created aims and ideals for this organization, for his teachings, and that ideal, the first ideal was to disseminate among the nations, the nations, a knowledge of definite scientific techniques for attaining direct personal experience of God. That vision, that dream that the great guru expressed very early when he first established Self-Realization Fellowship is no longer a dream, no longer a vision, it's a reality that these teachings have reached the furthest corners of the world. I'd like to share just one little satisfaction on my part that for years when I was speaking at the convocations held in the Bonaventure Hotel and I would first come to the podium to speak and look out over the thousands that had gathered there, there was always this thought that very quickly crossed my mind and I would speak inwardly to Guruji and I'd say, Guruji, what about all those who will never have the opportunity to come? All those who will never be able to experience the joy and the power of your family coming together to concentrate for one full week on your teachings and to immerse ourselves in your living presence as you bless us. That's no longer a dream, is it? No longer a vision. We now have the opportunity with this live streaming to come together, literally, worldwide. Often when I lead a retreat or a longer program, and especially when we have an opportunity like we do this week, I know many of you have set aside the entire week. You plan to spend all of your time immersed in the teachings, immersed in the inspiration, immersed in that divine love that the Guru is showering on us, to consciously set aside all thoughts and cares of the world. And for those of you who can't, to also join us as we affirm. And if you would all repeat after me, and even though I can't hear all of you, I can't hear the divine response worldwide, and for all of you too, from your heart and in your soul, as you repeat this affirmation, feel that you're hand in hand, hand in hand, with the devotees worldwide, with the seekers worldwide, and in the embrace of that divine guru. So repeat after me, bless me to set aside all thoughts and cares of this material world and go within to be alone with thee. Bless me to set aside all thoughts and cares of this material world and go within to be alone with thee. 
bless me to set aside all thoughts and cares of this material world to go within to be alone with thee. The title of the class today is Transforming Life's Obstacles into Stepping Stones for Spiritual Success. And it was presented as the pathways of life are strewn with obstacles that can cause us to stumble or momentarily lose direction. Similarly, on the path towards self-realization, to walk steadily upon life's unpredictable journey back to God. The seeker must be able to see, analyze, and use every challenge as a stepping stone for soul unfoldment. This class will focus on how, in this turbulent world with its engrossing challenges of personal relationships, financial difficulties, and social unrest, we can discover a common denominator of calm, wisdom-guided understanding and positive outlook to enable us to turn even the most stubborn obstacles into a lighted pathway to spiritual success. When I first put my mind on this topic, the idea rose that I would identify what those obstacles, those challenges are that face us in today's world. As it says here, turbulent world with its engrossing challenges of personal relationships, financial difficulties, and social unrest. But as I delved more deeply into this and, and meditated I realized that there was something deeper underlying this topic that needed to be shared. And especially for the spiritual seeker to be successful. And that starts with an understanding. We learn from the holy science written by our beloved guru's guru Swami Sri Akteshwar, that we have entered a higher age, a Dwarpara Yuga, and have left behind a Kali Yuga, an age of darkness, an age of ignorance, an age of materiality, and very little spirituality. In this new age of Dwarpara, Dwarpara Yuga, What we find is that all of our social systems, our financial systems, our educational systems, our political systems, for the most part, still have their roots in that dark age. And because we've entered this higher age, an age of awakening spirituality, an age of increased inner awareness, an age of people beginning to question what is the purpose of life. There must be more, there must be more than what I'm experiencing with my spiritual pursuits. So it became clear to me, came very clear to me that the answer is not without, but the answer is within. The real obstacles are within. They're not material obstacles, they're spiritual obstacles.
So what I did and what I'll present tonight was I have gathered together some of the major obstacles that we can face, that we do face on the spiritual path. And these become a way of life. They're not just something that you add to your life, but they become the core of your inner life, the foundation upon which your spiritual life is built. Some years ago, when I lived in India, I lived in our Ranchi ashram. One of my responsibilities was opening the mail. And going through the mail one day, I opened a letter, and in big, bold letters across the top, it said, this can wait, and that can wait, but your search for God cannot wait. And I immediately recognized it. This was a quote from Guruji that was printed on the top of the lessons application. But below that, in bigger letters and more bold, was this. Where are my lessons? Where are my lessons? And it turned out that this was a man who had applied for the lessons, sent in his application, and later we found out, because of some quirk in the postal system, his lessons hadn't arrived. But this can wait, and that can wait, but my search for God cannot wait. This was a man of great enthusiasm and dedication. He wanted those lessons. He was anxious for those lessons. He was on fire to receive those lessons. I remember myself when I first enrolled for the lessons. I lived at the end of a long lane and had to walk about an eighth of a mile to the mailbox at the end of the lane. And on the day when I knew the lessons would arrive, I'd usually run to the mailbox, run to the mailbox, take my lessons out, and even before I reached home, the lessons were open and I was beginning to read. I was so anxious to read those words, to read that guidance of the Guru. And I share this with you because one of the first things that the seeker to be successful on the spiritual path must realize that as Guruji taught, seeking God is the purpose of life. And this is not easy. You're going against the, the flow, if you will. You're going against the grain of most of the world. There's challenges. There are obstacles. You have to be on fire. You have to be on fire for God. You have to awaken that fire for God. You have to awaken that yearning, that longing for God. And you have to keep that fire alive. Keep that fire alive throughout your spiritual life, throughout as you tread the spiritual path. It's a lifelong commitment. And if we lose sight of what the purpose of life is, and if our enthusiasm and our commitment wanes, then we get caught up, we get swept away, and the obstacles become greater and greater and usually more difficult to overcome. So with this in mind, I'm again going to use an affirmation. I'm taking this opportunity to draw us all together this evening, even though we've gathered virtually, to take this opportunity to repeat another affirmation. And don't just repeat it with words, but again, go within and feel that you're repeating this affirmation in unison with all of those around the world that have gathered. So repeat after me, this can wait and that can wait, but your search for God cannot wait. 
This can wait and that can wait, but your search for God cannot wait. This can wait and that can wait, but your search for God cannot wait. The next obstacle I'd like to share, an inner obstacle, is often the seeker feels unworthy or unprepared to place their feet on a path like the one that Guruji has given us. This path is not for everyone. It requires commitment. It requires discipline. It requires time spent meditating. It requires time spent studying. And it requires the willingness to apply those teachings, those how to live teachings in every aspect of our life. But if these, cro these thoughts ever cross your mind, remember this. Those who are drawn to a path like this, the path of Kriya Yoga, Guruji called the airplane route to God, and his promise that if you follow these teachings to the best of your ability, you can in fact find God in one lifetime. That's not a small promise. That is not a small promise. And yet, to have been drawn to a path like this, I'm certain that each of you, even if you're drawn out of curiosity in the beginning, or a deep burning desire to find God, that inner draw, that inner magnet that drew you to Paramahansa Gananda was the result of lifetimes, lifetimes of questioning the purpose of life, of beginning to experiment with prayer, with affirmation, with spiritual study, possibly with meditation. And over those lifetimes, you prepared yourself, you prepared yourself to be receptive to that divine call when you came in contact with Paramahansa Gonanda's teachings. You are worthy, and you can achieve it. Guruji would never draw someone if he didn't see within that soul, if he didn't see within that soul the ability to not just follow, but be, to be successful on the spiritual path. Never feel unworthy. Those who are drawn to a path like this are near the top of the evolutionary ladder. Those who are willing to step out of living a life focused mainly on materiality and to start looking within, seeking within. And also, very important, as one places their feet on the spiritual path, to begin basing your confidence basing the trust in your ability to successfully follow this challenging path, to build on your own experiences. Guruji Paramahansa never said that this is the only path. Never said this is the only path. He said, if you're interested, you try, you experience, experiment. If it works, if you achieve success, then you follow this path. But I can say safely now, over after 50 years of following this path, that these teachings work. These teachings work. 
if you're sincere to even spend a little time in the beginning learning to meditate, you'll quickly begin to experience an inner calmness and possibly even something deeper, a little joy, a feeling of love, a feeling of divine presence. Build on those experiences. Build on those experiences. Those are messages. Those are the messages that tell you that you can be successful. You are worthy to place your feet on this spiritual path. Never doubt. Never doubt. I think one of the most striking experiences I had when I first came to this path, I was in India, and one evening I was asked to travel from our Ranchi ashram to Calcutta, to our ashram in north of Calcutta, to Kineshwar, and had very little time, pulled my, my belongings together, went to the train station, and in those days we traveled what was called three-tire. There were three different levels of sleepers, and the distance between those sleepers was maybe 24 inches. So I found myself on the train, in this space, laying down, and I realized I had not practiced my energization exercises. I had missed my energization exercises. What to do? The train was crowded. There was no way I could practice them even in the aisleway. So I made up my mind I would practice them mentally. So I laid there and mentally went through the movements and tensed and relaxed and sent energy as we do with this technique to each of those body parts. And when I was over, when I had finished, my body was tingling with energy, tingling with energy. And I know this was a special blessing from Guruji because I'd made that effort. And he wanted me to know that these techniques work. These techniques work. So never have doubt, in over 50 years, everything that I have practiced, following Guruji's teachings, everything he promised, everything that he has said one could experience, I have found to be true. So build your confidence, build your trust in yourself on your experiences. And always remember that practice is progress. There may be periods when you're not getting the results that you would like or that you expect or you may have been having some good, deep, fulfilling experiences and then you go through a dry spell. Remember that practice is progress. Keep on. Keep on. One of our Parm gurus, Lahiri Mahashai, had a saying, Banat, Banat, Banjai, a message to the spiritual seeker, making, making, one day made, making, making, one day made, keep on, keep on, keep on. The next is peace. Guruji said, the first proof of God's presence is an ineffable peace. Through meditation, one can experience a stable, silent inner peace that can be permanently soothing background for all harmonious or trialsome activities demanded by life's responsibilities. Lasting happiness lies in maintaining this evenly peaceful state of mind. Lasting happiness lies in maintaining this even, evenly peaceful state of mind. Something I've often shared when I'm asked to speak about Guruji's teachings and here we're talking about removing obstacles. The only thing 
The only time that we can change anything is in the moment. I can't change what I said one minute ago, and I have a choice what I say now and one minute from now. It's in that moment, it's in that moment that we make progress. It's in that moment that we're given a choice to either spiritualize that moment or to respond in a worldly, materialistic way. And what Guruji is saying here, what Guruji is saying, vital, very important. The first manifestation of God in meditation is peace. You've contacted God. You've contacted God. And it isn't that you, through your efforts, have created peace. No, not that. That manifestation God is also your true nature. We're all children of God. We're all made in the image of God. That peace is our true nature. And what Guruji is saying here, that we need to maintain and hang on to that peace in every circumstance, in every moment of our lives. And that becomes the foundation upon which we tackle life's obstacles. And we know, Guruji used to say, don't lose your peace. Don't lose your peace. If you lose your peace, you've lost that contact with your true self. You've lost that connection through which guidance, energy, wisdom are available, directly available through your consciousness to deal with that moment, to deal with that obstacle. But also, life isn't all obstacles, just to be fair. It's a moment when you can express love. It's a moment when you can express understanding. It's a moment when you can express patience. And in so doing, you're spiritualizing those moments by manifesting those divine qualities that flow from the soul. What this also says is that, and this is key to spiritual success, that the spiritual seeker begins to not turn within from without for answers or inspiration or guidance or strength. No. No. The spiritual seeker begins to look at the world from within to act from within, to feel from within, to manifest those divine qualities that he experiences, that contact with his true self, that contact with God. He lives his life looking out from within. So another affirmation, I'd like us all to again join together worldwide family to repeat after me God is peace I am his child I am peace God and I are one God is peace I am his child I am peace God and I are one God is peace I am his child. I am peace. God and I are one. The next key for seekers who follow the path of Guruji is to apply his teachings. Apply his teachings. 
in my own investigations, my own experience, I've never come across another teaching, another spiritual path as complete as that which Guruji has brought to the world. I used to think when I had the autobiography, Bhagavad Gita commentary, Second Coming commentary, several books by Guruji and his lessons. I used to think, how can I absorb all this? How can I apply all this? Is it possible even? And the answer was no, it's not possible. But Guruji brought this special dispensation to the world knowing very clearly that we're in a higher age and there, this great tug of war between the Kali Yuga mentality that pulls us toward the material world and this growing awareness of spirituality, of the need to go within, that you need tools, you need guidance to deal with the day-to-day -day circumstances, the day-to-day -day challenges, to help you in responsibilities, to help you in your relationship with others. So Guruji has given a complete teaching. I don't know of any situation, any challenge, any problem that he hasn't covered in his teachings. And now we have his new lessons. There's 18 new lessons that are the foundation of our spiritual life. And in addition to that, there's a growing number of supplementary lessons. Supplementary to what? Supplementary to studying and applying the basic 18 lessons, learning how to meditate, learning how to establish a personal relationship with the Guru, and through that practice to begin to experience first peace, to experience God within, to establish that relationship within. And from that center of peace, to live your life when circumstances come, to look for the answers, the specific answers to a specific problem, the specific guidance to a particular need from the lessons. And we do that from that center of peace. And also, very important to remember that Guruji's teachings are not just words, not just ideas, not just concepts, not just guidance, not just truths. Guruji himself never claimed that anything he gave to the world, anything in his teachings came from him, not from Paramahansa Gananda. But it was through his attunement, his oneness with God, that these truths, this guidance flowed through him. So the teachings are imbibed with the vibration of God. The vibration of God is in those teachings, in those lessons, in his books, in his writings, behind his lectures. And when we use those teachings, when we apply those teachings, we study those lessons, we study those teachings, we study that guidance. When we apply those teachings, that vibration flows through us and spiritualizes those actions. I used to think in the beginning when I hadn't studied all the teachings or didn't feel that I knew all the lessons well enough or information in the books, there were just so much, so much. I used to think, what am I going to do? Do I need to study all of this? Do I need to remember all of this? Do I need to apply all of this? And the lessons, no, we don't. Don't be overwhelmed by the volume 
of Guruji's teachings. Don't be overwhelmed by the volume. No. I've heard many people who heard Guruji speak, you know, his direct disciples, say that when they heard him spoke, when they heard him speak, they would walk away saying, Guruji gave me the answer to the question I had on my mind. Guruji gave me the information I needed to help solve a particular problem that I was facing. And it's true with the lessons. Guruji speaks to us through those written words, through those written words. What we need to do, and we meditate, we're in a calm, peaceful state of mind when we study, is yes, we study, we read, but we look for those kernels of guidance and information that stand out to us, as if Guruji is saying, this is what you need at this particular time. And you'll see this. Now, if you're watchful and you're calm, you'll see that the teachings will speak to you, and you'll be able to glean, to draw from those teachings exactly what you need at that particular time. It's also true. This week during convocation, there's going to be many talks, a lot of information, a lot of inspiration, a lot of guidance. From that inner cent center of peace, be alert, be aware, ready to receive those special messages, those special thoughts, the special guidance that you resonate with, that you feel, ah, oh, thank you, Master. Thank you, Guruji. This is what I needed. And now, I'm very happy to share, we have a new app for the new lessons. And that new app has an incredibly useful feature, a search engine. Say that you have a problem. Say that you want to know something about a relationship. You can go to that app, put that particular need in, and you'll have access to all of Guruji's teachings that are available in the lessons on that particular topic. It's almost like Guruji speaking directly to you, isn't it? How wonderful is that? It's one of the incredible advantages of this age that we're in. So again, I would like one more affirmation here. Let us repeat. I will reason. I will will. I will act. But guide thou my reason, will and activity to the right thing that I should do in everything. I will reason. I will will. I will act. But guide thou my reason, will and activity to the right thing that I should do. The next obstacle, Guruji said that unwillingness to meditate is the greatest delusion. The greatest delusion. And I won't dwell on this in this talk because during the week there will be many classes focused on meditation, classes on the actual techniques, classes on the advantages, the benefits of meditation. But it is one of the key building blocks of developing the inner strength and the inner attunement. Actually, our spiritual life begins and ends with meditation, begins and ends with meditation. Always remember that unwillingness to meditate is the greatest delusion, the greatest delusion. 
and it's easy to say, I don't have time or there's something more important, don't listen to that thought. Don't listen to that thought. So I've shared with you some of the key building blocks that lead to a successful spiritual life, successful attunement with the divine, to build a foundation upon which one can reach out to the world from that inner core to deal with the world's challenges and the world problems. The world will not change from without. The world will not change from without and they will continue with the struggles and the uncertainties and the stress until they start tuning in with the higher vibrations of this new age and those newly learned, newly learned spiritual habits begin to manifest in our lives and manifest in our world. <clears throat> I'd like to end with these words of our beloved Guru. Breathe in me the way to love you, that I may learn to faultlessly love you. Pour me the wisdom wine by which I become intoxicated with you. Whisper in my ears of silence the way to be with you always. Speak to my wandering senses and lead them back to your sanctuary within. Call the marauding mind and counsel it how to trace its steps to your home. With your silent eyes, just look at me and I will know where to find you. You may be hide behind the ocean, you may hide behind delusion, you may hide behind life. You may hide behind dualities. You may hide behind the logical conundrums. You may hide behind unanswered prayers. But you cannot hide behind my love. For in the mirroring light of my love, you are revealed. So we have before us a week, a week of total immersion in the teachings of our Guru, Paramahansa Gananda, an unequaled opportunity to deepen our spiritual lives, to deepen our attunement with that Divine One, to experience that great peace, that great joy, that wisdom, that love that comes only from our attunement with God. And in closing, I'd like to say that let us share one more affirmation. Maybe an inspiration that each of you will identify with and take as an opportunity to maximize the benefits of this week. So repeat after me. This week shall be the best week of my life. I will start a new determination to dedicate my devotion forever at the feet of God and my Guru. This week shall be the best week of my life. Today I will start with new determination to dedicate my devotion forever at the feet of God and my Guru. Thank you. God bless you. 
Jai Guru.